Hello everyone, this is image 16 for the summer intraoral radiographic interpretation course for the D3 students. In this video, we'll use a peripical radiograph to evaluate the success of three implants. Clinically, two implants do not appear to be stable. This is a maxillary left premolar radiograph. We see three implants in the areas of the first premolar, second premolar, and the first molar. Based on this periapical radiograph, we see that the implants are vertically oriented. These implants are almost equally spaced. There is no radiolucency around the implants and the trabecular bones. Such a radiolucency would indicate periimplantitis. Based on this radiograph, these implants appear to be successful. Are these implants ready for crowns? We have a panoramic radiograph as well from the same day. So these are the three implants, just as we saw on the periapical radiograph. These three implants appear ideally positioned and ready for the crowns. We should remember that a periapical or a panoramic radiograph is a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional structure. Although the panoramic and the periapical radiograph showed the mesial distal position of the implants, these images do not show anything about the buccal or palatal position of the implants. These three implants could be outside the alveolar bone, maybe even on the cheek, and create almost a similar periapical radiograph. On a panoramic radiograph, all we know that these three implants are in the focal trough. These two implants being narrower than the distal implant could be outside the focal trough, could be more buccally positioned. Or these two premolar implants could be actually smaller than the molar implant. You remember that the structures closer to the sensor on a panoramic radiograph are narrower. The structure further away, something that is more palatally positioned, will be wider. So based on this radiograph, we don't know if they are the same size as this one or they are smaller because they are more buccally positioned or this implant is palatally positioned. To know that, we need a cross-sectional imaging. So we have a CBCT scan. So this is the maxillary CBCT scan of the same patient. This blue line represents the image on this screen. So we are looking at the molar implant. This is the palatal cortical plate. Here is the alveolar crest and the buccal cortical plate is here. So the implant is closer to the buccal cortex. There is no radiolucency, so the implant looks adequately integrated. There are no radiographic signs of periimplantitis. Let's move mesially and see how the premolar implant looks like. So this dark band is an image artifact arising from the metal of the implant. Here is the second premolar implant. This is the palatal cortical plate and you can see that this implant is too far buccal without any buccal bony support. This is the buccal cortical plate and we do not see any support on the buccal aspect. The implant did not follow the outline of the alveolar bone. Coming mesially, let's look at the first premolar implant. This is the palatal cortical plate. This is the buccal cortical plate. The apex is outside the buccal cortex and there is no buccal bony support. So you can appreciate it better here. There is no buccal bony support. If we look at the axial slices, this is the apex of the implant and that's the cortical plate. The implant is outside the buccal cortical plate. The molar implant is inside the alveolar bone. Both the premolar implants are outside or partially outside the alveolar bone. So based on the CBCT data, we saw that these two premolars were too far buccal and this implant was centrally located in the alveolar bone. So how should we properly evaluate areas for implant placement? American Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology has published a position paper that's freely available from www.aaomr.org. The position paper states several conditions. Initial examination. 
a panoramic radiography or intraoral radiography for initial examination when you are thinking about placing an implant. A CBCT scan is not recommended. When you have decided on implant planning, that is the preoperative site-specific imaging, and for that, the recommendation is cross-sectional imaging like a CBCT or a CT. So these are the recommendations. After implants are placed, post-operative imaging, if there are no signs and symptoms, no signs of failure, peripical radiograph should be sufficient. If there are symptoms or if there is suspicion of failure of implants, a cross-sectional imaging is recommended. So in our case, two implants were not stable and the CBCT scan was the appropriate examination for that. I recommend that you download this paper. It's freely available at the aamr.org website. Read this paper. This will be important for your clinical practice. Thank you very much for watching Case 16 for Summer Radiology Interpretation course. Please come back again for another video.